obviously disappointed, uh, disappointed in our effort, disappointed in the discipline we played with tonight. Um, we were outcoached, we were outplayed, uh, and, and that's on me as the head coach and the, the leader of this football family to, to have our guys prepared to go out and play the type of game we need to play. You know, our fans came out and created a hell of an environment for us today, and we, we went out and didn't do our job as a team, and that's disappointing. Um, but again, as I said last week, you know, we're not going to overreact to one game, give credit to Penn State. They uh, were well prepared. They played at a high level. Um, and, and for us, what we've got to do is figure out what we need to do on the offensive side of the ball. You know, that's my side of the ball. That's the expertise I bring. And we've got to figure out what our quarterback's capable of getting executed. We've got to make sure that our best players are touching the football. And we'll get in here and watch this tape. Uh, we still have a lot of football left to be played. Um, and again, like I said, we won't overreact to, uh, to, to this game. Um, again, and credit to Penn State uh, for the way they played tonight. Um, as you notice, DJ Turner didn't play today. Uh, it was my decision to uh, not play DJ. DJ uh, has to focus on uh, the non-football things right now. I won't get into uh, or comment on anything uh, further on that uh, until I have more information. But uh, it was the coach's decision not to play DJ today. And uh, again, we want him to focus on the non-football things. Um, and with that, I guess I'll open up to questions. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Mike, when it was 14 nothing, and you had the drive and then, and then Josh threw the pick and they scored again, did you feel that the team almost, um, you know, get, not gave up, but just sort of just felt that the game was over at that point? Well, I, I hope not. You know, obviously, I think the air came out of us. Uh, we put the, put together a good drive, and you know, it was not a great decision. Obviously, the, the, the throw the interception down there in the red zone. The, we wanted to at least come away with some points in there. Um, I, I don't think we gave up. You know, our defense continued to play. What I'm most disappointed in is I've got to figure out a way to get our quarterbacks having confidence and playing the way we played the first two weeks and. Uh, we we'll watch the tape and figure out the things that they can execute and uh, go back to the drawing board and get them ready to play and get them ready, uh, get them prepared to play against Rutgers for next week. Coach Sean uh, Clifford's evening, he was you know on fire in the first yeah. half. What do you f just uh, what do you feel he was able to take advantage of, especially? Early? Well, I think the big thing, and we said this going into the game, is that we needed to affect the quarterback, and you know we're a, a pressure defense, and for whatever reason we didn't necessarily affect him. He made some early quick decisions, got the ball to number one, uh, who's a big time player. And we knew that he had the, the capability. So again, when you let a guy that you know is a game plan record affect your game plan, and, and we, that's why I said we were out coached. So we've got to figure a way to stop their players that are good players with the way we defend, just like on offense. We've got to figure out how to do the things that take advantage of the things they are really strong with on the defensive side of the ball. Mike, uh, I know you said you don't want to overreact to a single game or anything, but having said that, you have a bunch of guys that just went through the last few hours or so. Is there any concern on your end that there might just be a little bit of a hangover, even for a few days or so, as, as you guys try to process and deal with this kind of stuff? You know what? No, we got the 24-hour rule, and for us, it's win or lose. We, it takes 24 hours. We got to get it digested out of our system. As a coaching staff, we've got to get on top of the tape, figure out. Uh, what, what went wrong. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at the stat sheet, we got, you know, I want to say our first 15 to 20 plays, we had four or five penalties. We had two turnovers. We gave up two big explosive plays. So, um, you know, right from the start, we, we didn't give ourselves a chance. And for us, uh, that was the disappointing part. And so, again, as the leader of this thing, I got to figure out how to have, make sure that my team is prepared when we go into games like this and, and to play with the discipline we need to play with. 
obviously you'd ultimately like to be a program that's competitive with a team like Penn State and the other powers in this conference. I mean, what do you, what do you feel like the first steps are um, to start closing that gap as a program? Well, again, it goes back to that. It starts with, you know, playing with discipline and not beating yourself. Uh, as I've said in here many times, uh, you lose way more games than you win. And again, I'll give credit to Penn State, but if you look at the way the game started, we didn't do a great job of playing with discipline. We had a lot of penalties early in the game, the turnover down in the red zone. You know, those are all things that were self-inflicted. So to close the gap, you know, good teams don't beat themselves. And, uh, you know, right now we're not playing that type of football, and it's, it's, it's up to me to figure out how to get us to play that way. Coach, uh, the offenses look completely different from the first two games as, as compared to the last two games. What, in your opinion, has been the biggest difference uh, leading to that? Uh, has it been just the quality of the opponent, or is it execution? No, it's definitely execution. Um, you know, uh, I thought we played and executed at a really high level the first couple of games in the season. Um, and now, again, my job is to figure out the things that will allow us to play with confidence on the offensive side of the ball. It starts with our quarterback. This offense is quarterback driven. And again, you know, to comment and say how Josh played other than I was disappointed in obviously the turnovers. But, you know, we've got to protect Josh. We've got to do a good job of uh, mixing it up and making sure that our best players are touching the ball, our running backs, which I feel is the strength of our offense. We, make sure, we need to make sure those guys are heavily involved in the game plan. And so what we'll do is we'll go watch the tape. We'll uh, get with, you know, as a staff come together and put together a plan that will allow us to at least get back to playing with some confidence on that side of the ball. Yeah, Coach, um, you, you have talked a couple times about the quarterback you know, getting getting them ready to play better. Um, are you still committed to Josh, or is there a chance you're going to look at the whole array as you go forward? I mean, we're committed to Josh. He's our quarterback, but just like any other position, you know, as we evaluate the position, uh, we all have to do our job. And, you know, Josh is our quarterback, but we also feel like if a guy isn't productive, then we've got to figure out a way to get productive players on the field. So. Uh, Josh is our quarterback. Um, we got, I've got to do a, good, a better job of getting him playing back with the confidence that he played with earlier. And, and again, it's easy to just point the fingers at the quarterback, and that happens a lot. But, you know, for us up front, the protection, uh, the running backs hitting their landmarks, the receivers on the perimeter blocking, it, it's all of us. So it's not just the quarterback, but it's my job, and I've got to make sure that that guy has the confidence in what we're calling so that we can get it executed. Uh, Coach uh, Bill Jones from SB Nation Radio. Uh, kind of answer my question, but I'm just going to say it. Uh, with Josh taking the hits that he did from Syracuse and then the Temple game, you say he was a little bit mainly uncomfortable in the pocket now. I noticed a couple times in the game just shooting off the uh, ball a little bit faster than what he normally did just to get it out. Um, you know, until I watch it, it's hard to say from this game. Uh, definitely, it, it goes back to what I talked about earlier. We've got to do a better job of making sure that we get him protected and that he makes decisions in the offense that allows him to get the ball out quick. You know, we're not an offense that's going to drop back and throw it 50 times a game. I mean, we're a, a balanced run pass op option type offense where the ball usually comes out quick. And so what we've got to do is we've got to get Josh our offensive line, the receivers, everybody back on the same page of executing the system at a high level. And right now, the biggest thing that comes out of it for me is I don't feel like we're playing with confidence on that side of the ball. And whether it's the quarterback, whether it's our left tackle, whether it's the tailback, whether it's the tight end, we've got to get the confidence back. And so to me, you got to go back to the drawing board, look at the things we do well, make sure we're getting that game planned and called so that these guys can go out and have some confidence. Now, defensively in the back end, the secondary, uh, what would you say would need to be done to keep the big plays from happening? Well, it starts with tackling. You know, I thought today we didn't tackle as well as we've tackled most of the year, uh, even up in, up through the Temple game. You know, we, we put some pressure on the guy, we brought some extra pressure, and they were able to get some slants on the uh, completed, which typically were catch tackles for us in the first three games. And today, I thought our tackling was awful. Um, and so we'll watch the tape and then figure out, uh, you know, what we need to do. Uh, obviously, it starts with, again, tackling, getting the ball down on the ground, which are things we did really well the first three games. Jeff Rowe, back to David. 
Coach, I, I'm, I know you're obviously very disappointed in the result, but when you look at the atmosphere that was here, when you had 53,000 people here and all the students, how do you take this and go to, whether it's alums or to your team or whomever, to show them that this is a repeatable thing, that this is something that can be a regular thing here at Maryland? Well, you know what? I think, one, as I said, our fans have been very supportive. And like I told our team, we created this environment with how we played. Now, obviously, today, very disappointed, like you said, in the discipline we played with, the effort, all those things. But those things are all correctable. Uh, for me, I've got to make sure we concentrate on the football part. Um, our administration has done a great job of creating this environment, of of put, putting us out in front to, to create the type of environment we had today. This is the environment that I witnessed as a coach earlier in my career. So uh, it's definitely a repeatable thing, but obviously the football part, we've got to do our part, which means as the head football coach, I've got to make sure that we're prepared that when we get environments like this, that we don't go out and play the way we played today. Coach, you mentioned a lack of confidence maybe on offense. Does that stem from Temple, that outing, or is this something that early turnovers kind of lead into that? Or exactly how does the lack of confidence start? Well, it just comes from not executing. You know, when you call plays and they're not being executed, obviously that creates a little doubt. That creates the lack of confidence. And so, you know, I know from the quarterback position, when you don't feel comfortable, when you're not confident, uh, from whether it's the protection, whether it's the receivers getting open quick enough. And that's the stuff that, as I said, when I go watch the film, and we figure out kind of the things we've got to get called to help our offense play with the confidence like we played earlier in the year. And uh, we'll get it done. You know, again, I'm not going to overreact to it. This was a, uh, not a, a great effort on our part, obviously. We did play a good team in Penn State. Uh, it's very well deserving of their number 12 ranking. Uh, but we've got a lot of football left to be played. There's nobody in that locker room that's quitting. Nobody in that locker room is giving up. And uh, again, you know, it's my job to make sure that we're prepared when we have these opportunities. Time for two more. Uh, Wayne in the back. Coach, uh, you lost Marcus Lewis and Deion Jones. Nick Cross looked like he belonged out there. He had some trouble at the other corner. Are those guys, uh, what happened to Marcus? And also the other Marcus Minor, what happened with them as well? Yeah, it's, it's early. I haven't even gotten the injury report. You know, the initial thing with Marcus uh, Lewis was a knee. I don't know the severity of it. But with Marcus Minor, it was a dislocated toe. So um, he went out pretty early. You know, we lost Lolo and early in the game. And, you know, the injuries are going to be a part of the game. And we've got to continue to work to create the depth we're going to need to play in this league. Uh, it's a tough, tough league, really good teams. and. Uh, you know, again, it's my job to make sure that we're prepared and, and that we'll go out and you know, get this game behind us pretty quickly and then put our focus on uh, putting, putting together a good game plan to go up to Rutgers. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.